Welcome back to the channel. We've got making his debut is Sean, the owner of Comics Elite. Obviously, we've seen Drew and other people associated with uh, some of your publishers and your shop, but this is your first time on the channel. Welcome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Long, long time fan. Cool, first time you. guest. <laughs> <laughs> first time, long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And what we're seeing in the hyper collectible stuff is there's this little thing coming in called AI art. Everyone's talking about AI generated scripts, AI generated comic books, and certainly AI generated art is a part of that. We know DC and Marvel, I believe, have policy that, that have come down. They've spread them out to their artists and stuff because the Supreme Court has actually you know, made their ruling as far as AI art that you can't generate AI art in, in copyright. But some people are actually going out there and generating AI art. They're creating their own publishing houses, throwing one stuff, whether it's a comic or not, they'll call it a comic book, and then selling them for astronomical prices, but not actually telling people that it's not human art. It's actually AI generated. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, I have a huge problem with that. Um, I, I, I respect anybody that wants to make a comic. I, I encourage everybody to do that, right? Please, please make a comic. Like, uh, this is what's good. The, the, there's a joke. Uh, the good and bad about comics is anybody can do them, right? Um, <laughs> everyone has an idea. If you want to get your idea out there and you're passionate about it, please make a comic, hire an artist, script it out, do it. Um, I highly encourage people to get into the space. But you have to do it morally, ethically, honestly. Um, you have to do it the right way, right? Quote, unquote, the right way. Um, and like you said, there's some people out there that have been doing things like um, they'll, they'll make an AI cover. It's clearly AI. And either they, they won't tell everybody it's AI. They won't say that it's AI. When you ask them, hey, who's the artist of this cover? They won't say. They'll just ignore your question or they just won't say who it is, especially some of the streamers. Um, on It's kind of prevalent on whatnot. Um, who's, who's the artist on this? They just won't say anything. Um, what's even worse is, now, in my opinion, that's deceptive. It's deceptive. If you are going to make an AI cover, at least tell your buyers, tell your fans, be honest with them and tell them this is AI. It's incumbent upon you to communicate that clearly to people who are buying your product, what they're buying. Because these aren't mass produced. These are being sold as high-end collectibles. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really determines the value of the collectible, a lot of times is the human hand that actually drew it, the artist themselves. And they're trying to go around that and creating some really stunning uh, pieces. And they look like really good covers, but it's not really their work because AI doesn't work like that. It, you don't go out there and, and, and AI doesn't generate an image off of its like, own imagination. It goes out there and steals images off the internet, puts them together, smooths it out, and you get a beautiful image at the end process. But it's always piecing it together from somebody else's work. Yes. And a lot of the prompts that you have to put in there are referencing other artists' work as well. A very popular one is art germ style. Uh, that's a very popular prompt that's out there. So um, in its current form, I've, I've disavowed AI in its current form. I've, I've very publicly said none of my publishing companies, my comic store will never carry an AI generated cover in its current, in its current form, the way AI is being used. It's changing rapidly. Um, maybe something will come up in the future where it can be used, where we could get into a whole discussion about that. In its current form, I completely disavow it. It's theft. It's, it's unethical. It's immoral. It should not be done. Um, so if someone's out there, and there are people out there doing stuff like this, they're taking AI covers, not saying that it's AI. Even worse, even worse is they're making up fake artist names. They're making fake artists' names up uh, because they don't want to admit that it's AI. Or they'll say, this is the AI artist, which there's no such thing, by the way, <laughs> right? Um, typing in words is not generating art. Um, it, I'm very passionate about this, as you can tell. And uh, people have to be honest to their fans. They have to uh, be upfront about what they're doing and it's very easy to see through some of this some of this uh the crap that's out there um, so we'll, we'll get into like how to spot ai art here in a second sure. but there is one very prominent member of whatnot that's out there that's really successful does kickstarters and stuff like that i believe her name is melinda's comics and she uses a lot of obviously ai generated covers and they're selling for well over two three hundred dollars a pop 
as if Art Germ himself was illustrating them and they were original, you know, exclusive things that were only 100, 200 print runs, but never actually admits to the people that she's she's selling these to that they're actually AI. She's one of them. Um, I personally have been in her streams and have asked, uh, hey, who's the artist on this? Uh, I've been blocked <laughs> since then. Uh, so can't see the streams anymore. But um, I've asked specifically, who's the artist on this? You just kind of get ignored. Um, in one stream in particular, I did ask, hey, this looks like AI. And I was vi almost viciously attacked by a lot of the people in there watching her stream. Clearly her fans who don't care if it's AI. Um, but it's just, um, you have to tell people what it is. You have to say if this is AI, you don't have to do anything, but you should admit that this is AI. And then even worse, I think one of the covers, um, the artist is Max Fed. I have done as much research as I can. There's no such artist named Max Fed. There's a couple, and there's some other shenanigans going on over there with that uh, publishing company. I use the term loosely because if you're lying to your to your buyers, you have you have to adhere to some kind of of guidelines, some kind of a moral stance, some kind of a um, a place of honesty, really about where this art is coming from, how this art's being generated. And there are actually sites out there that are like, you know, top 10 most desirable covers this week that have actually gone out there and featured and prominently suggested that you go out and buy this AI art where they actually never went and, and confirmed that a real person even illustrated it. Yeah, that's what's sad about it is that um, some people just don't, they don't know enough. A lot of people I've talked to have said, that I've asked them, how do you feel about AI? And they're like, I don't know enough about it to have an opinion. I was like, well, then you should go research it. Research how AI art generates the art. How does the computer work? And you'll clearly see that it steals from other people's art. Um, so you have to do your due diligence. This particular uh, group out there that put it in their top 10, uh, put the image up there. And we're like, hey, this is a hot book. Okay, I guess it is. But again, once you do peel back the onion a little bit and you start to peel back the layers and looking to see what's really going on in there, you quickly realize this is AI-generated art that's not being admitted as being AI-generated art. It's being uh, said as under a fake artist name that has uh, no history of art whatsoever. No it's all credentials. It's no no deviant art page, no Facebook page to promote no. their work. No. Nowhere where you can actually see them develop from a, an aspiring artist to one of the best uh, digital artists in the world. It almost reminds me of when Black Flag made that that bootleg cover with Clayton Crane, where they weren't honest about it, and then CGC went out of their way to go and legitimize the cover, even though they were aware that it was bootleg. And it's like, what are you doing? You can't go out there and lend your reputation to what is obviously not the real deal. That is not a Marvel cover. Yeah. But this is a million times worse because this isn't even a human illustrating it. Yeah. Just because you, the old saying, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Imagine being an artist and you see this cover being listed as a top 10 hot book. It's a hot cover. And you've been working your entire life to hone your craft, to be able to do art um, on that level because AI can generate some very beautiful images. Imagine your frustration at thinking I've worked my entire life. I've tried to get to this level and I can't. And this person is going to take all the, all the hard work, all the labor, everything that comes with the hours and hours and hours of work it would take to even digitally create um, some of these images. They're completely throwing that away and typing in some words into a computer, getting an image and then selling it like it's like it's human produced art, deceptively selling it that way. And it's not just a whatnot thing. We have seen like one cover, I believe, from DC Comics that's, that it escaped through. We believe it was AI generated because it stole a face from like an art germ image in Vampirella, but it was on a Wildcats uh, a cover. Yeah, there were definitely some shenanigans going on there too with um, e either he lifted the face completely and just cut and pasted the face, maybe ran it through AI because that identifies another trend some artists are doing. They'll just... <laughs> There's so much shady stuff out there. They'll take a pencil, their pencils, run it through an AI program like Midjourney, and all of a sudden they have a beautiful image and they're putting it forward as it's their art. It's absolutely not. Um, another thing they'll do is they'll reverse engineer it uh, falsely. They'll have an AI image. You can tell the AI to make a fake work in progress 
um, pictures. <laughs> so it looks like a work. So in you progress. put it on your Facebook and like, I've been working hard. That's exactly what people do is they say, here's the work in progress. And any real artist that works digitally and the most traditional artists can even tell right away that's a bunch of crap. But your typical fan doesn't know any better. So, so as a fan, if you're looking out for AI art or a collector and you don't want to waste 300 bucks on an image that wasn't even created by the human hand, one of the things you can look for is an artist Maybe they, they were good, but they had a long ways to go, and all of a sudden, overnight, bam, they're like a DC cover uh, quality artist or a Marvel qu cover quality artist or somebody. You're like, wow, I never imagined they would get here, but they did it essentially overnight. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Uh, uh, you have to do your due diligence nowadays. You have to kind of do some research. So there's a couple things. The hot image in particular we're talking about, there's a ponytail that magically shows up and disappears in her head. Um, that's kind of a telltale sign. You used to think the eyes were really weird and there'd be extra fingers. The technology is changing so quickly. That's not really a thing anymore. Um, but you have to research the artist. If they don't have a history of art over a year long, because this AI has been around for about a year. If all of a sudden they show up and their deviant art does exist or their Instagram does exist. And out of nowhere, there's these beautifully rendered images. That's a telltale sign that they're just started using AI. Uh, very recently same thing like you just said if their art is looks a certain way and all of a sudden it looks drastically different they're totally using ai to add finishes or add touches on to, onto the art as well um there's a few a few or just look them up and if they don't exist like max fed um and they, they just don't exist period no art history no deviant art page no a social media no instagram no facebook um no previous work it's it's all smoke and mirrors it's just it's just lies and deception you also said like it uh if you look on some of the images because most of them are like cheesecake images they're almost all women in beautiful poses a lot of times there'll be like extra details around the elbow and stuff like that that ai likes to generate yeah yeah there'll be extra in the arm in the in the in the chest area there'll be extra creases a couple extra creases in here the clavicle will look weird. The shadows will be kind of strange too. Uh, artists have to deal with light sources. The light's coming from this way. The shadows will be on this way, et cetera, et cetera. They'll just be random shadows all over the place. Um, it, it is getting much, much more difficult to tell, which makes it, you know, it's kind of a scary time in the industry because if you can't tell the difference in some of the art and if you're not asking, it's, it's a very slippery slope. Um, where people well, that and the producers put... need to be telling you, like, I don't yeah. fault Melinda's comics for going out there and creating AI generated covers and selling them uh, to her fan base on whatnot. Just say they're AI generated covers so collectors know this might not be what I'm interested in actually investing in. Yeah, that, that's what I've said. Just be honest about it, you know. Um, it, it's uh, just be honest, straight up. You know, if if Melinda's going to say this is a cover and I'm proud of it and stand on it and sell it, just say it's AI. Just admit it. Same with artists. If an artist is going to say these are my pencils and then I ran it through Mid Journey, be honest about it. If if there's nothing to be ashamed of, why would you have to be deceptive about it? So as, as somebody that. that that's specializing in more of these high end collectible type of cobble books. You know, it ends up being kind of a slippery slope. I mean, you could save a lot of money if you decided, you know what, I'm not going to hire a human artist anymore. I know basically the idea of what I want on the comic book cover anyway. Let me just use this thing. You probably save thousands upon thousands of dollars a month, let alone in a year. I imagine there's a lot of people out there that are going to take that shortcut, you know, and trying to save some money and really poison the well of one of the few things in modern comics that's working. You know, people aren't reading comics because of what's on the pages anymore because the stories themselves aren't very good. If you actually pollute this, it could ruin an entire market. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it could destroy that entire side of the comic book industry. It absolutely could. You said that 100%. And really, you know, money brings out the best and worst in people. And when you start to get greedy and you want to cut corners and not hire a real artist, you're going to look to cut corners anywhere you can because you're so greedy and you just don't care about your fans. You don't care about being honest to your fans. You just want to make the quickest dollar that you can. 
that's what you'll do. You start using AI. And when you, when you really think about it, what if you're not going to put an artist signature on a, on a cover because no artist did it, who should get credit for that artist? If you type in prompts like um, art germ style, you should tell the public, I use these prompts. I used art germ style as a prompt. So at least the original creators of that style that the computer used. Get some credit. Then, yes, to get some credit. You should at least. That's the right thing to do. But unfortunately, not everybody does the right thing. Well, I do want to say thank you very much for joining us today. Obviously, we've had a relationship with uh, Comics Elite and some of the publishers and people working there. Appreciate you having, having you on here today, Sean, to talk about the AI covers that are kind of infiltrating into whatnot. They're showing up on eBay. There, there's stuff on Kickstarter. Or they're all over the place. You need to be wary of these. You need to be able to watch out for it. And you need to know that it's out there so you can combat it if you're not interested in actually investing in AI collectibles. Do you have any final words, Sean? Protect yourself, guys. Ask questions. Um, demand to know who the artist is. Uh, if you have no problem, buy what you like, collect what you want. If you want to, if you want to buy AI stuff, that's on you. Um, but just know, do your research, know the dangers of it, and what it could really do to this industry uh, if it is supported the way it's being used right now.